The Xbox Drive is fueled by patrons at patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. And I want to thank everybody who supports us over there, especially our Capremium producers like Dallas Ford, Drew Agnew, who I hope you'll subscribe to his podcast, The House of Mario, Jace Baldridge, who you should follow at twitch.tv slash Backeridge, Lee Navarro, the fearless leader of the Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life team, and Jonathan Brown. And I hope you'll subscribe to his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash gaming purple monkey. Our platinum producers, Brian Scott and Trucker Sloth, and all of our gold members, Argo, Benji Kong, Brendan Myers, Dallas Robbins, Dano, Emily O'Kelly, Heather Boney, James Johnson, Joel Brooks, Jose Jimenez, Mac Time. Marcus O'Neill, RJ Kern, Skinny Matt, and Xavier Reyes. Thank you, everybody, for all of your support. And if you want to contribute and support the show, go to patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. Now, on with the show. Hey, everyone, it's me, Sean Capri. I'm in my car, and you're listening to the most horsepowerful podcast on the internet. It's the Xbox Drive. I'm on a Skype call with my friend Ryan Turford. He's the man on the moose. And on our journey today, we've got that E3 hangover, but we're still hyped to talk about all the things about Xbox. So jump on into the Xbox Drive. Greater than X. Hello, Sean Capri. Ryan Turford, uh, I refuse to believe that E3 is over. I am in such a good mood. I had so much fun hanging out, doing all the things over E3 weekend. But how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You summed it up perfectly talking about how the E3 hangover is certainly set in. I mean, Mm -hmm. my body is finally recovering from, you know, what's been kind of a crazy weekend of awesomeness. Um, Really has. Kind of capped off with, uh, with everything that we saw yesterday and... Um, it, yeah, like you said, it's been an awesome weekend of sweet hangs and uh, yeah. talking about video games and watching video game stuff and taking in all the E3-ness, you know. So, um, yeah, E3, of course, we've talked about it before. It's like one of my favorite times of the year. And mm-hmm. it, it was just even though everyone was at home, Sean, and I wish we could have all been in a room together doing this stuff. It was still really fun to, to do oh, yeah. everything this weekend. Yeah, man, it's um. I feel like we did it kind of right, you know. I, I I look at all the coverage that happened out there, and and special shout out to the crew over at PSVG. I feel like they did an excellent job uh, with Xbox Empire and Nintendo Shack. I thought they did a really really wonderful job, and and I was saying it I think on Sweet Hangs or some other podcast that their Discord is excellent. So uh, yeah, quick drive by shout out to the crew over at PSVG. And what I want to say too on that note is just we, you're right. You kind of said we we had Sweet Hangs all weekend, and that's what it really felt like. It we virtually hung out together and we got to watch a bunch of conferences together some were great some were not so great um but ultimately like e3 did what it what i feel like it's supposed to do is that it just brought us all together so that's maybe the the part of the hangover that i'm experiencing right now is that we're not doing that today like we get to record this as you know we get our our little time here but it's um that dedicated weekend is over and now we kind of go back to real life and everything else and it's kind of where we're at man but still the Xbox Drive continues. I'm going to go get a drink, and I think we're going to have a great show, man. Yeah, same here. So, honestly, before we get into the, the house cleaning, I wanted to say huge shout-outs to both PSVG as well as uh, the crew over at the Trophy Room for hosting us this weekend because um, oh, yeah. we didn't really do any live streaming other than uh, a couple sh- uh, live streams on your channel, Sean. We mostly reacted to everything either on the, the Trophy Room's channel or with the, the Xbox Empire over at PSVG. So, I mm-hmm. wanted to say huge sh- shout outs and thank yous to kyle joseph donnie elaine and nathan for all hanging out with us this weekend that was for making it pretty special so um huge yeah. shout outs to them for that and and like donnie said on sweet hangs like it was a really special moment getting to do the e3 press conference with the xbox umpire and kind of having us mm-hmm. all be in like the same room together so um i thought that was really 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 cool to finally get us all together especially because we hadn't done something like that since um since elaine came on board um, so I yeah. thought that was really cool t- for us to do 
to kind of collab like that. But even, you know, jumping on with Joseph and Kyle was really fun too. Now let's clean mm-hmm. the garage a little bit. Of course, if you'd like what we do and you want to support the show, um, you can subscribe to us right here at youtube.com slash the Xbox drive. Um, you can also leave us a review on your podcast feed of choice, whether it's Apple podcasts, Google play or any other podcast feed that you listen to us on. Um, of course, mm-hmm. if you leave us a five star review on Apple podcasts, we will read it on the show. We don't have any this week, but obviously if we do, we will actually read it during this segment here. Also, if you would like early access to this show as well as all of our other shows that we do over at Yumi Capri, of course, patreon.com slash Yumi Capri. Throw a little tip in the old tip jar and outcomes content, uh, whether it's early or exclusive <laughs> content, we got you covered there. We pretty much got something new every day of the week, except for this week, which is kind of weird schedule wise because um, of E3, but uh, everything will kind of be going back to normal uh, next week. So head over yeah. there if you want to check out all of our content. Also, again, Huge thank you to N64 Josh for being part of our E3 reactions show um, Mm because we did do an extra mile reacting to the Xbox conference. Um, So we're not going to touch on that in this episode. Again, if you want to hear our thoughts on the Xbox conference, go listen to that episode with N64 Josh. It's really long, but we go, we talk about just about everything at the conference, except for a couple of things, which uh, we're going to get to in in questions this week because we got some questions about that stuff. Yes. Uh, but let's just dive right into things. Let's grab our A-tracks, pop them in, John. It's time for the playlist. And let's talk about the interesting selection of games that we got this week. So, John, <laughs> I'm going to start with you. What would you play? Well, so what, I'm, I'm curious what, what you think is interesting. I guess just different. I'm not sure. Well, I'll dive right in, Ryan. The first game I want to talk about is the Tunic demo. You and I have talked about Tunic on the show uh, for quite a long time. Little indie darling that is shaping up quite nicely. It's part of the 40 demos that are happening with the demo showcase over on Xbox. Downloaded that really quickly because I've been really excited about that after playing it back in 2019 over at E3. And Ryan, this is a, this is a Zelda-like uh, I think in looks, but what I discovered that this little fox wearing a tunic who does look like Link, he swings a sword like Link, he smashes pots like Link. This is a Soulsborne game, everybody. Ooh. I don't know, Ryan, did you play this at all? Did you try? Did you get a chance to try out Tunic? I watched you die over and over and over again, like 50 <laughs> times, Sean, and it made, me, and me, and it made me like a little bit shy to play that game right away. So I did not get a chance to play it yet. It's downloaded. So, so okay, let me, let me elaborate a little bit because that might scare people off on a game that I think they really should try because I got to, it's not, it's not like the entire game is like that. I found a particular spot on the map that did have, I, I don't know how to read these. They had like little, like, um, like traffic, like blockages all over the place. What would you call those? Like, like row closed, kind of like under construction yeah. signs, like signs all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in some cases on the, on the map, it'll block you actually. Cause it, it seems to be trying to keep you contained within the part of the demo that's actually, um, finished. And then, yeah, there's this kind of giant boss that appeared, but I want to get that to that in a second, because the majority of the gameplay is very Zelda. Like you're going to wander around. It's got that top down view. You're swinging your sword. You can dive around, uh, with your enemies. You got Z targeting with, the left trigger uh, or Z trigger um, targeting, if you like. And if it does feel a lot like a Zelda game, you're, you're smashing pots, you're collecting items. You can get like, uh, you can get dynamite. You can get these ice grenades. You get all these different things. It'll help you on your journey, uh, finding keys to unlock new areas. Very, very, very Zelda, like a lot of puzzles that you're going to be solving. But as you're killing these enemies, they're dropping some sort of bits or uh, collectible, some sort of currency and when you die, you lose all of that. And you have that one extra life. You get your next chance to go collect your, your bag of goodies, just like in Dark Souls or Bloodborne, or even as uh, Jay Spocker so aptly pointed out, like in Shovel Knight. When you die, you lose, you lose a bunch of your money in Shovel Knight as well. So you get one more chance to go pick it up. Now, the demo doesn't really, at least what I found, the demo doesn't tell me or show me what I'm going to be spending those things on. But it definitely hints at, like, there's, a, there's that Soulsborne type of gameplay here and then to your point i found a big boss he was very hard or or it was very hard Uh, i played it a couple hours and finally finally beat it felt very satisfying to beat it but i think i got a hundred of those biddies and i have nothing to spend it on so i think people should try it i think they'll like it but if you're stuck on that skeleton boss don't do it, Ryan, is my warning yeah. to people. Don't <laughs> push on. It is not worth it. But Tunic, it ran really well, and I was surprised by it. Hi there. Um, can I please get two large Diet Cokes? Two large Diet Cokes? Yep. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. 
so tun- Tunic played really well, Ryan. I was surprised to see that element of the game show up into it, but I am happy to talk about it here because I actually don't think that that's what people are expecting from Tunic. Yeah, that was certainly not what I was expecting, at least from all the trailers they'd shown us, where it really felt, well, watching it like it was trying to be a Legend of Zelda. It wasn't trying to be, mm-hmm. you know, this like Dark Souls fusion of the Legend of Zelda that you're kind of describing here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I am a little bit less interested in the game now, knowing the type of nature that it is, especially because um, it's like, even if you didn't tell me that here, I, I definitely felt that while watching your stream of the game. Right. Um, but I am still going to check it out. Um, I mean, I'm just the type of person that doesn't it's game really pass, right? Souls when it eventually games. does come out. Yeah. It'll be on game pass when it comes out. Yeah. Too. So, I mean, uh, whether I play the demo now, which is only live until the 21st, by the way. So it's, it's not live mm. for very long. Um, or we're trying it when the game comes out. I will still try this game, but, uh, I'm just yeah. a little bit less excited about it, but I also think that it's going to appeal to more people yep. this way because people love Soulsborne games. And uh, I think Thank you. I think people are going to probably dig this when it comes out. Plus, it's got all the Zelda flair, like you said. It's a very pretty game, too. Very cute. It is very, very pretty. And Tunic is so cute. The little fox is, is so, it's very charming, very endearing for sure. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And uh, Sean, you also played Yakuza Like a Dragon this week <laughs> on stream. Dude. Tell me about that. Okay, well, before I before I jump in, I just want to briefly call out again the Xbox Empire, my favorite damn Xbox show on the internet. Uh, Donnie Reese, one, uh, one year, uh, whatever year World War Z came out on Game Pass, they started a, an award at the end of the year. They called it the Game Pass Game of the Year, which it doesn't have to be like a game that came out that year, but just something that came out on Game Pass that year. Uh, and I love that concept. I love being able to acknowledge and recognize games that are coming onto Game Pass as a special category. And that... That award, I was saying to Donnie, is going to be harder and harder to to go through every year because so many games are coming out on Game Pass mm-hmm. like Yakuza Like a Dragon, which you played when the Series X first launched. And I am getting into, um, I think I'm midway through about the second chapter, second or third chapter or so. Mm-hmm. I am so head over heels over this silly little game, Ryan Turford. I nice. love it, man. It is so weird. The storyline seems to be like a Japanese soap opera with like gangsters in it is kind of the best way I would kind of wrap that up. And I the, the turn-based combat is not complicated in the in the least. So mm. a dum dumb like me can I can wrap my head around this. No problem. Definitely reminds me of South Park, the stick of truth, with some like there's an active block where just as the animation they're going to attack you you hit b you can do a perfect guard you can kind of lower you lower your damage or reduce the chance you're going to get cut or have bleeding statuses like that but dude it runs so good on series x and actually i've been playing it both on series x and s definitely noticing the difference in resolution but man yakuza like a dragon is kind of my surprise of the year just because I haven't played a Yakuza game ever. I kind of was scared away by the long cutscenes, and maybe it was just because I had a little extra time booked off for E3 this weekend, but I, I've enjoyed my time so far, and I think this is my next game that I'm going to, I'm really going to go for it, Ryan. I think I can actually do this one. Dude, that's awesome. I, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, because even though, like, I know the elements that turn me off from the game are, definitely don't sound like they're, they're, they're turning you off again. Like, no. I don't really like, like that, uh, that ca- crime soap opera drama <laughs> stuff. It really is. It's so over the top. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Everybody's yelling at each other. Like, every reaction is just way over the top. But I'm, I'm, I guess I'm here for it, man. I didn't know that I was, but here yeah. I am. Between, be, like, and the fact that it, it's very talky talky is, is what I thought oh, yes. I was playing it. And, and you noticed it right away too, where it's just, you don't get a lot of playtime in where it's, it's a lot of talk. Talking. And yeah, it's, if you're not enjoying the story, like the talky talky stuff is going to rub you the wrong way. But if you are really oh, yeah. enjoying that, that element of the story, then yeah, I think that it's like a really unique blend of, of, uh, of gameplay and story that I think if you, you are into it, then I think you're going to be really be into it, which is why mm-hmm. it sounds like you're really enjoying this. And again, the, the combat itself was my favorite thing about it. It was really fun. It really reminded me of, of playing games like Paper Mario or um, other games, or like Mario RPG or other games. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, um, good call. With the active, you know, attacks and blocks, essentially, which I, I think mm-hmm. is really cool. So yeah, I'm I'm glad to hear you're enjoying it, even though again, it's not a game that I loved. I, I'm glad that you're able to enjoy it and are having I'm some fun it. with it. And you're finally you're finally mm-hmm. giving me the chance as well. 
Um, yeah, so they, yeah. It's, and it's out of my wheelhouse. Like, this is not like a typical Sean game. And I played Virtual Fighter in it. There's a Sega arcade in there, man. It's so good. And one of the characters loves Dragon Quest and goes on and on about that. Like, it's it's so wacky. Yeah. I'm, I'm very... What I'll say before wrapping this up, Ryan, is I'm very surprised at how quickly I became attached to these characters and surprised at what was happening to them and caring about those surprises. They landed because... Oftentimes, I would kind of pop in and out of streams of people playing Yakuza, and they'd have these reactions like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that happened. And I'm like, who cares? Like, this is so over the top. I I just don't understand why anybody would care about it. But as I'm playing it, I care, Ryan. That's the answer to that question. Who cares? I care. You care about Yakuza now, Sean. It's official. I care about Yakuza. Also, Mm -hmm. it's got to be pretty awesome now to have this as the starting point for you, especially because this is the way the series is going to continue. They've already announced that where it's going to continue to be an RPG going forward so this style of yakuza that w- started with like, like a dragon is going to continue and, and that goes back to what i was talking about when we talked about this on on the post show where i think it's probably the perfect place for anyone who's new to the yakuza games to definitely yes. start because it doesn't have any ties to the old games other mm-hmm. than maybe a couple small references here and there uh, yep. and it's a completely different game type so yep there you go all right uh as for me sean i've been playing a little game that i'm going to be talking more about on an extra mile that's coming out this Ooh. weekend, Sean. Um, this, of course, is News the Ninja me. Gaiden Master Collection. We actually talked about this last week on the show, br- very briefly, that I'd been playing it, but I hadn't really, couldn't really talk too much about it. Um, yep. Of course, this was uh, sent to us from our friends over at Tecmo Koei, of course, for review. Um, I am playing the PlayStation 5 version of the game, so not the Xbox version. Boo! I'm just kidding. <laughs> but... From what I've been told, they're they're basically identical. So it doesn't sure. matter which one you're playing on. Everything I'm going to say in the review can kind of be the same for both versions. Um, it's a it's been a really solid port of Ninja Gaiden Sigma One Two and then Ninja Gaiden Three Razor's Edge. Um, the Ninja Gaiden Sigma games are essentially just uh, remakes that they did for the PlayStation Three and the PlayStation Vita of Ninja Gaiden, the original, and then um, Ninja Gaiden 2 that was on the the Xbox 360, Um, but with some new content. Um, However, I do think that the original versions are still better than the Sigma versions. I said this when this was first announced, and I still feel that way after playing it today, because I've actually, um, since uh, getting the copy of the game, I've actually finished Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 and 2 already, like for the purposes of the review, and then... um, I'm, I'm playing through uh, Ninja Gaiden 3, and it's exactly the same as what we have on the backwards compatible version of, of the game. So um, at that point, I would say if you're an Xbox owner and you're looking at this, probably better to maybe save your money and just buy the backwards compatible versions of these games, um, because I do think they're actually the better versions of the games. They got nice yeah. X enhancements, so they actually look really good if you play them on Series X. Um, or Xbox One X. Um, and the Sigma content that's added isn't really that great. So I think this collection in, in particular is more for people on other platforms because this is released on everything on Switch and PC and PlayStation um, where they don't really have access to those games. So for us on Xbox, we're spoiled, Sean. We have access to these backwards compatible games. So mm-hmm. we don't. Really, this is less of a problem for us. So I don't think we need to worry about this too much. So um, I'm going to go into... But you're a fan of these. Like you like, you, you're a longtime fan of these games. Like are you happy? Are you kind of like, what's the deal? Like, what are you, like where are you at with that? So I think that the collection itself is pretty solid for a Ninja Gaiden fan like me. I I actually am happy with it. Um, But as a Ninja Gaiden fan, I do think the Sigma versions are worse, but they're still really fun. I still think they're worth playing. Um, If if you don't have access, let's say, to Ninja Gaiden Black or Ninja Gaiden 2, I think these versions of the games are still fun. Um, And there are some fun things about these that are exclusive to these versions. Like they have extra playable characters, for example. Like you can play as uh, Rachel, um, who's like the axe-wheeling girl from the first game, or you can play as Ayane, um, who's from Devil uh, for Dead or Alive, um, as well as some other Dead or Alive characters um, in some mm. of the later games. So there, is, there is some interesting stuff here. But again, it's if if you're a fan of the the Ninja Gaiden games, you're probably going to prefer playing the original versions rather than yeah. rather than these versions, um, especially for the price too. For because this is a full price game, Sean. So yeah, um, I would say that for the full price, it's probably better just to get the backwards compatible versions. But again, I'll dive more into why 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 that is kind of in in uh, the extra mile and you'll be hearing that again this weekend uh which i'm excited gotcha. to talk about that there but nice. enough about that sean let's slam the brakes on this conversation because we got a lot of news to go for through this week it's time for some breaking news and uh basically again all the news we're going to talk about here is basically all of the e3 news that we got uh, that's xbox related that we got outside the microsoft conference because again if all gotcha. the xbox conference stuff we, we talked about on 
the previous episode. So we're to start off with the announcement of another of more announcements. Sean, Microsoft have announced they will they will be having another showcase called the yeah. Xbox Games Showcase extended on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It will feature conversations with developers like Double Fine, Obsidian, Ninja Theory, Rare, and more. And this is being hosted by Paris Lilly, which is actually mm-hmm. pretty exciting. Um, so at this extended look, I'm expecting this to just be dev diaries and not really have too many announcements of significance, um, but maybe just to give you more insight as to how the development of some of the games that maybe they didn't talk about the showcase are going, especially with Ninja Theory there, for example, because they're yeah, going to probably Hellblade. talk about Hellblade. Um, so I'm interested to see what what this um, showcase is going to have to offer. What do you think about this, Sean? I am so excited. I love the way that they're kind of doing this. Uh, normally, like I kind of, I don't know what to think of what Nintendo does every year, which is they do the the forty minute direct, and then they always have like hours and hours of of Treehouse. And I always kind of go like, do I really want to be watching that? And yet here I am in Xbox Land wanting to watch all of this stuff and maybe there's a a presentation style that they've kind of established here in 2021 in that they've done it twice now they had a actually three times there's an awesome two minute video that goes a little bit more into starfield people should definitely check out there's a couple minutes more on forza horizon that is sort of like this dev diary type of deal like um really really well done there as well as um what they did for halo and the, the multiplayer deep dive that they did is excellent. So I think because of those things that I'm seeing outside of what they showed us on Sunday, that I'm excited for this. And of course, Paris Lilly, a, a class act uh, among us, like just a, a rising star in the content creator field is going to be hosting this. So yeah, I'm very intrigued. And, and it does seem to be answering some of the questions that, or maybe some of the few questions we have left after seeing such a strong presentation on Sunday, my friend. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, th- I think that here, this is where we're going to hear more about like an update on Avowed and Hellblade and mm-hmm. just everything else that we didn't really hear about about the main conference. Um, it's interesting yep. that Rare is going to be here because we've been hearing some stuff about Everwild that we're not going to get into on the show because um, it's not official or anything yet like that yet. Uh, so yeah. I'm interested to see if maybe they kind of give more of an update on that here um, or mm-hmm. if Rare is working on something else. Maybe they just t- are there talking about Sea of Thieves with the crossover with Jack Sparrow. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, yeah, either way, I'm excited to see what's here, um, but I'm, I'm not going into it expecting like any announcements or release dates or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, no so. blockbuster like moments like here you go, world yeah. premiere. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, it's just to, to learn more about some of the games that are much farther away, which I think yeah. is what, what we kind of need, especially because I know it. a lot of people had the complaints after the Xbox showcase that they, we didn't see Perfect Dark or Fable or anything like that. Obviously, we weren't going to see them there, but people still were upset that we didn't see them. Um, but those are very far away. Maybe that's where we hear about some of those at this showcase. So Yeah, we saw enough. We saw 90 minutes of goodness, so I'm OK with that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Next up, speaking of the Tunic demo that you you talked about earlier, Sean, during the Summer Game Fest showcase, they announced the Summer Game Fest demo showcase that is happening on Xbox Live this week with 40 plus demos that are of unreleased ID at Xbox titles. The demos will only be live until June 21st, like I mentioned earlier, and are considered early in progress demos for the most part, with some games yeah. only being in the alpha stage. So expect bugs and weird stuff to happen when you play these games. They are not polished demos. They are not the normal type of demos. Um, and this is kind of continuing what we saw last year with the demo mm-hmm. showcase, um, where we just saw a pile of games, a little bit less demos this time around but uh i think it might be a little more curated this time so, it, so i haven't really yeah. checked out too many of these just because again i've been so busy uh with with e3 and then working on the two extra miles that we're getting this week again one is not xbox related and then one is with the ninja gaiden one um yeah so i haven't had time to to check these out um so sean did you download any of the demos besides tunic at all tunic is the only one but cat lateral damage has my attention right. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> and I think Sean. that looks pretty silly, but yeah, I, I'm kind of right with you of, uh, yeah, tons and tons of content over this weekend. Um, and, and I think it's good that they've pared it down to <laughs> pared it down to 40 yeah. because what it was like 80 or 120 last it, year. It, it was like, 80 plus. Yeah. 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 That's too many, but yeah, I mean, you got to most of them last year, which is kind of I insane. Did. I only missed yeah. like four or five of them. <laughs> I'd like to see people like leave comments in the YouTube video or in the Discord, which there's a link in the show notes. Like, I'd love to hear what other people, because we can't tackle this on our own. I'd love to see if other people are downloading demos and trying them out and which ones they are and how they feel about them. I think that would be a great conversation to have with the community. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I mean, I would love to know which one of these 
Like, because obviously there's probably one or two demos here that were, were of a game that maybe we're not thinking to da- download. Right. Might, might be like right. a hidden gem or something. That might be like the next, you know, cross code or um, Celeste or something like that. So, yeah, I would love right. to know from people, like, if you checked out some of these demos and there was a, one that maybe we didn't know about, I would love to hear from you, like, what, what demos we should check out for sure. Yeah, man. Or Chris Tales, for example. That was another game that I didn't really know about yes. before last year's demo event. I played the demo for it, and I was like, this game's amazing. I can't wait for it to come out. <laughs> or or nice. Raji was another one, too, that I was really yeah. surprised about. Um, that ended up being an awesome game. So there you go. That's going on until uh, Monday. So definitely check out the demos while you still can. Next up, and this one came out of left field. Very, very surprising announcement out of the Nintendo Direct of all places. But mm. Tecmo have announced that the Wii U exclusive Fatal Frame, the Maiden of Deep Water, will be getting a re-release on Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S sometime in 2021. Now, for f- those uh, folks who don't know, the Fatal Frame series is actually no stranger to Xbox. It actually originated on the original Xbox back in the day. In fact, um, recently, I actually did an episode about Fatal Frame 2 as part of the Crossroads, because that was actually nice. one of my favorite games on the original Xbox. So it's a really good survival horror game that kind of, it's almost like Pokemon Snap meets like Resident Evil with like weird Japanese Whoa, horror. Oh, that's a great way to describe it. Nice. Yeah, because in order to kill the, the the spooky Japanese ghosts that you have to fight, you basically you have to take their photos with a with a special camera that essentially like seals their soul in the camera, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's actually a really interesting series. Um, but it was actually purchased from Tecmo by Nintendo. Um, during the Wii U era, because that was when Nintendo was trying to like get more mature franchises on their consoles. Um, so yeah. they actually bought the Fatal Frame IP from Tecmo. Um, and and uh, now, for whatever reason, they decided to do this re-release, and we thought it was going to only be Switch only, but now we're seeing it come to every console. It's literally coming to everything, PlayStation as well, as well as Xbox. And uh, mm-hmm. it's so cool to see, because Fatal Frame, again, it's a great series. Uh, Made into Blackwater was actually a really awesome game on on the wii u and i'm so glad people are going to have a chance to check this one out yeah i missed it completely actually and as somebody who was a champion of the wii u back in the day like i thought i was playing all the games it seemed like that was a manageable thing to do but i totally missed this one and it feels more at home i think on on the xbox and on playstation of course it's still coming out on switch but you know that even just the the perception of what games should and shouldn't be on switch is totally different than what mm-hmm. games people were expecting on the wii u so very very cool man i like to hear it yeah, I, I, I love seeing this franchise maybe return to Xbox. And who knows? Maybe this might mean, like, if they do another Fatal Frame game, maybe it will also come to Xbox. So I'm yeah. looking forward to what comes next. All right, next up, this is one that uh, you and I had mixed feelings about. Square Enix, during their showcase, have announced Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, to be fair, they'd already announced it before, but they basically were revealing the game for the first time. Um, this is coming to us from IDOS Montreal, so the same team that did Deus Ex, as well as shadow of the tomb raider and is coming to xbox one and series x and s on october 26th of this year sean in this game you fight jello cubes if i'm not, if I'm not mistaken i almost um, i almost yelled about it in the intro there's oh i dude i i should actually hold back because <laughs> my my pure thoughts on this are not all that positive but i as i'm learning some people are actually very excited about this game and to those people i say i'm very excited for you i don't get it I think this game looks drab, it looks dry, it looks boring. They showed us that you fight jello cubes. I don't get it, man. I I want no part of this game. I don't think that they did Square did anything to really win me over. They even showed up on Nintendo show and it's going to be a cloud-based game over there, which is maybe the most interesting part about it, but yeah, no thank you, dude. This is a in a, in a year full of games, there's lots to play. This is a very easy pass for me, my friend. Yeah, I think that this is the type of game where a, if it comes to game pass, I'll, I'll check it out. If it comes to game pass, um, or B, if it goes on sale, maybe, I'll, maybe that's when I check this one out. But, uh, I I'm, I'm someone who actually liked Marvel's Avengers and the combat looked very similar to Marvel's Avengers. So, mm-hmm. um, if, I think if you liked the combat in Marvel's Avengers, you you'll probably have a good time with this, but I'm with you with the enemy design in particular just seemed the most boring part of it where again, very you're, boring. You're, you're literally fighting just jello cubes 
for the first like the 10 minutes of the footage that they showed. And it was yeah. not really all that interesting. Not only, not only that, but like some of the humor w- between some of the characters just didn't really land for me. Um, but again, I'm not going to judge the game this early on. Cause of I course. Mean, you never know. I think, I think they could turn it around with the full game. Um, yeah. and again, I Montreal does good games. So, I mean, it's possible that this game turns out okay. And again, I personally like the campaign for Avengers. So, and especially it's nice knowing that there's no live service elements in this, this part this game, which mm-hmm. was kind of my biggest turnoff from Avengers. Um, so I am curious to maybe see kind of reviews for this when it comes out and then kind of gauging my excitement from there. I think that's probably yeah. how I'm going to treat this one at this point. That's the way we, we should always. And actually, I kind of want to walk that back a little bit, too, because I even just said I'm playing Yakuza right now, which has almost no gameplay. And uh, the, the rest of it is kind of capturing me. So maybe there is something to be said. I wasn't turned off by the, the character models like maybe some people are with some of these uh, Marvel games coming out of this, these studios. And so that wasn't a problem for me at all. So maybe there's if there's a story there that, that could be interesting, if the, the, the banter is, is something to, to kind of marvel at, pardon the pun, then maybe. But, man... At this moment in time, I'm I'm pretty lukewarm on it. Yeah, same here, my friend. Especially in again this year of games, where it's just there's a ton of games. All right. Yep. Next up, this one, this announcement got me really excited. Way Forward how, announced during the limited run showcase that they're actually doing two new River City Girls titles. So they're doing River City Girls Zero, which is actually a remake of a 1994 Super Famicom title that was part of the Kunio Cone series that was kind of like the inspiration for River City Girls, where you basically play as the girlfriends kind of rescuing um, the, the the guys from, from River City That's Ransom. That's awesome. Um, That's so and, good. And it never came out here, so it's actually getting a translation and basically rebranded as River City Girls Zero. That's coming to Xbox in late 2021. And then next year, Sean, we are getting River City Girls 2 coming to Xbox One and Series X sometime in 2022. River City Girls was one of my favorite games of 2019. I Mm -hmm. loved that game. Um, It's such a great, great beat em up. And I can't wait for the sequel. I mean, WayForward did an amazing job with it. They've already confirmed that the the, the team that, that did the first one is coming back, as well as Megan McDuffie, who is the, the composer, did all the music. The amazing music from the first game is returning, too. So I, I can't wait for this game. It, it's going to be incredible. Nice, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, I, I can't say that I really played any of these games, but I'm excited to see these types of games even coming to Xbox, dude. Especially exactly. And the awesome thing too is that if you haven't played the original River City Girls, it's on Game Pass right now. So you can definitely go check that check it out. If you like games like Streets of Rage or Scott Pilgrim, I think you're gonna really dig it. Yeah. Yeah. And last announcement before we get to uh listener mail, Elden Ring, Sean. It, apparently it was at E3. <laughs> I might have been wrong about oh, it. Oh yeah. Um it officially got re-revealed and it will it came along with a release date. January 21st, 2022, we saw the first like game cinematic gameplay trailer, I guess you can call it, um, where you didn't really see the HUD or anything like that. But it was obvious that what they were showing was gameplay mixed in with some of the cinematics. Um, Yeah, it's it's a game that exists. That's all I really (laughs) got to say about Elden Ring. What do you think about the Elden Ring trailer, Sean? Well, I want to first say that maybe you deserve points because I I think technically this was not at E3. So you might actually get points for that because it was at Summer Games Fest and Bandai Namco did have a showcase that they really only did one game. Uh, and it was not this one. This game looks cool to me, man. I, I don't know. I feel like there's a there's a lot of different reactions and opinions on this one. I'm not like the, the diehard who was just like waiting for them to tell me something about Elden Ring. But I it piqued my curiosity, dude. I, I like those games. I like the the Bloodborne. Um, I, I, just the, the setting and the aesthetic. It looks very creepy and, and I don't know, kind of kind of like it's going to make me unsettled. A little mm-hmm. bit just playing this so i am very very intrigued but and i and it's actually coming a lot sooner than i thought there's a couple of examples of that over e3 that we got games uh, that we hadn't really heard about forza horizon 5 is a great example where we hadn't officially heard anything and now it's coming out pretty soon so the question that remains for me is just like are they going to stick to that date does that actually have a chance but i thought it showed particularly well it set the internet ablaze like we all imagine that something like that probably would but yeah, man, it has my interest. I think that I think it looks I think it looks cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the setting looks really cool. Um, and I think that like all the visual stuff that they showed in the trailer uh, looks awesome. However, again, I'm not really the, the Soulsborne person. Um, and even when I play Soulsborne games or just really hard games in general, um, I always love when they're 
very they run really fast again when something yeah. like Ninja Gaiden or Devil May Cry, Bayonetta. That's that's those are more like the right. the, t- the hard games that I like to play. Um, but and again, it's just if it's if it plays anything like Dark Souls or Demon Souls, like those or Bloodborne, like those games feel a little too slow, a little cl- too clunky or weighty to me. Um, yeah. To, so I personally never really get into those, unfortunately, it, it, even though I like kind of the lore and the look of those games. Um, mm-hmm. I just the feel is just an instant turn off for me. So, but I am glad that people are excited about it. Again, I love watching uh, Joseph's uh, reaction to it because <laughs> he put out a little reaction video over on the trophy room um, uh, about kind of his reaction to Elden Ring. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'm excited. People are excited. But again, not for me, but I'm, I'm happy to see that people Looks are, cool. finally got their wish and it's finally coming out um basically at the start of next year which is cool mm-hmm. all right let's let some of our friends into the car with us sean it is time for the carpool and we're gonna start with mike at blaze night zero nine two three he asks what are your thoughts on redfall you guys didn't really get to it in your post e3 wrap-up show um we did right. run a little bit uh short on time during that show that was the last thing they showed during the showcase of course this is the the new ip from arcane um studios it looks like it might be like a live service like destiny style game sean what did you think about redfall i have I, you know it's probably better that we've kind of waited on this one rather than recording as soon after as we did because i have come around on it quite a lot i've had a number of conversations with donnie as we've talked about on the xbox empire uh chatting with him about just like what is it mean for the show that that final show like what is that space supposed to occupy and i have i think like lots of us have a um kind of a preconceived notion on what type of game what type of reveal what like what kind of impact that space is for and as i sort of have been reconfiguring and really thinking about e3 and the format of these shows and everything about it I've gone really deep into thought about some of this stuff in my conversations with donnie and a few others it's like I was in the moment, honestly, I was kind of let down. I was like, I don't know what this is. It kind of looks like another back for blood. It it sort of had a very familiar kind of theme to it. But then we've learned a little bit more as uh, after the conference that it's this open world that you're going to be playing these things together um, with, with some of your friends. I'm much more intrigued about it, and I'm glad that we're getting a new IP from from a studio that handles something like, you know, almost supernatural powers, like we mm. saw with Dishonored. Like, those worked really, really well. And to be honest with you, like, I wish I was into Dishonored more. Maybe this, this game style is more up my alley and a little bit more action-oriented and co-op focused. Maybe it has a little bit more to it. But in the moment, as it was, as it was like, this is our last thing that we're going to show you, I'm like, that's not what I wanted from that moment and there's been, yeah that's kind of like my my high high level thoughts on it man how about you yeah i mean i am someone who's never really been to, into arcane's games um i always love mm-hmm. the settings from again very similar to what i just talked about with elden ring where like yeah. i love the settings of all their games like dishonored having this like steampunky whale oil future i yeah. thought was like really interesting um or even like a game like prey i thought was like a really interesting setting for a game um or mm-hmm. even something like death loop i think it's got like a really cool tone to it like it's trying to be this like grindhouse kind of uh experience and i think all that stuff is really cool but i've never really liked the way that the game those games really played they've never yeah. really been been for me so i'm cautiously optimistic about this mainly because again it's just one of those things where um, I can't really tell what the game's going to play like from the trailer. Um, we yeah. obviously heard a little bit about it, like you said, outside the trailer. Um, but for the most part, I'm not going to be interested in probably in this one until they show me the gameplay. And then I'll make, I might make a little more of a judgment on that. And even then it's like, it's tough for me to get, get excited about one of their games. Cause I know that it's not really for me, but yeah. I'm going on to it with an open mind because I, I want Same. them to kind of win me over. Cause every time I play one of their games, again, the setting's so cool that I want them to, to win me over with the gameplay. Um, so I, I'm going to come and do this optimistically. I mean, it's going to be on game pass, so I will try it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that, that's the nice thing about it where it's like, did it, um, I, I would go and buy Dishonored 2 or Prey and then feel bad because I would never finish them because I could never get into them. Now that it's on Game Pass, you know, that worry is gone. Like, I can, right. I can wor- try these games, and if they're, they're not for me, then that's what the un- uninstall button's there for. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm in- interested and intrigued to learn more about this. Also, I love the fact that it's about vampires and not zombies. 
because we yeah. have got so many zombie games this year at E3 that I'm kind of yeah. glad that we're kind of stepping away from zombies a little bit with this one. So, um, well, and it was a and it was a Bethesda show that opened and closed the show. I think there's more to it than than just that. It was not Gears, not Forza, not Halo that closed it. So I think they needed to kind of answer that. They needed to have Bethesda with prominent spots with the opening and closing. So there's a lot of reasons for it. But I echo a lot of your sentiments on that one, dude. Yeah, for sure. All right, next up, Brent Robinson at Okotoks Lawyer asks, how much excitement would there have been for most of the titles from the showcase if they weren't on Game Pass? So obviously we talked mm. about this, uh, the fact that almost every game from the showcase except for three games is going to be on Game Pass day one um, because, again, it very much was meant to be the Game Pass show. But at the same time, I think it's very hard to kind of separate game pass out of the showcase because yes it's ve- that's very much just xbox's brand right now it's very much the game pass brand but i do think that it's a fun experiment to maybe evaluate it from sean if you and i for example couldn't afford game pass but somehow could afford to buy the games outside of game yeah pass, um how would you feel about the showcase if you had to hypothetically buy every game that we saw yeah, or if game, yeah, if game Pass just wasn't even a thing at all. I think it is an interesting kind of thought experiment. First thing before I dive into that is what I think it does is for the three games that aren't in Game Pass, it goes, well, I'll just buy those ones. You know, <laughs> uh, Diablo is obviously one that I'm looking at. Uh, Battlefield is maybe the one of the three that I'm like, I just don't know about that one. Um, and what was it? Far Cry, Far Battlefield. Cry. and Yeah, Far Cry I didn't mention. Far Cry is the other one I, I would buy for sure. Um, but I... <clears throat> There's, it, it, you kind of have to almost go like game by game because a game like Stalker, I probably wouldn't have been like day one buying. I probably would have waited for a sale because I don't know anything about that series. But the fact that it is coming to Game Pass is so awesome. Like it, it you're right. It's so hard to separate these things um, that almost, I don't know. Like, I don't even know if it's worth doing. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, it's, this is the, I, I, it's impossible to say because it's very personal on what games kind of land for each of us. I All I can say is that I was really excited to play all of those games. The Ascent, I think, looked excellent. That probably is a game that I would that I would buy. And there's a lot of games they didn't even get to in the in the, in the actual presentation that show up in a lot of these graphics that we see. Like the Gunk, they didn't show mm-hmm. um, necessarily, but I would definitely want to be checking that out because I like that studio. And without the list in front of me, like it's kind of hard to do, but I don't know what your take is on this, man. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I can definitely say that if they weren't on Game Pass, let's say, I would definitely be less excited because they like I know I wouldn't be able to get to all those games because you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't go buy them or you know stuff like right. Redfall I'm so much more open to playing like a game like that because it's on Game Pass or because yeah. I have access to Game Pass because whereas I probably wouldn't wouldn't give it a chance otherwise right so um, yeah I think it but definitely- then you have a game like Forza Horizon Five which has got to be one of my most if not my most anticipated game of the year that if Game Pass wasn't a thing I would be buying and I would be telling everybody else to buy. Because it's I, just that great, or it looks that great. I mean, Donnie Reese game. was so excited about Forza, Sean, that he went and bought it anyways because he wanted to exactly. support the developer, you know? So, right. yeah, mm-hmm. I think that, I, I, I think there is an argument for at least thinking about it a little bit because um, I know that not everyone on Xbox has Game Pass. I mean, we've seen the, yeah. Xbox, the, the numbers on Game Pass. We've seen how many people own Xboxes. So there's mm-hmm. obviously a large contingent of people on Xbox that don't have Game Pass. So like when we yeah. do like an extra mile, for example, I always like to, if it's a Game Pass game that we're talking about, always like to throw in there, hey, by the way, if you're not, if you don't have Game Pass, is it worth it kind of thing? Yeah. I, th- I think it's important to at least talk about a little bit because um, we're in kind of our little Xbox Ego uh, bubble a little bit where we, we think everyone has Game Pass, but obviously that's not the reality of the situation. So sure. I definitely, I definitely uh, uh, can respect the idea of like you know maybe it's not as exciting if everything's on Game Pass, but that's not the reality we live in. We don't live in a bubble or, or we don't live in a vacuum. Like mm-hmm. and obviously all these games are on Game Pass, so um, I definitely think that. Um, it is more exciting because they're on Game Pass and because I'm going to be able to try out all these games that well, I probably wouldn't you, be able to otherwise. Sure, but and then you also look at just like how many months are left in 2021, 15 bucks a month, and it's like that's what, a game? You know, like yeah. that's maybe eighty, ninety dollars. I, I can't do quick math like that. But something, that's Halo something Infinite like that. by itself, Sean. Well, and that's what I was going to bring up is Halo Infinite is like it's not even half of it isn't even a consideration for Game Pass because it's free for everybody to play the multiplayer. So there, yeah, I think there probably still would be, and the fact that it is all going into Game Pass is a reason why people are so amped up about this one versus maybe in previous years where Game Pass was still kind of like a thing that they did, and it wasn't every game, but twenty-seven out of thirty games are going into Game Pass. It's it's very very hard to separate that 
Very nice. All right, last question to us, comes to us from Seamus McIsaac at Famous Seamus. Now, Seamus asked two questions, but we already kind of answered one of them about the demo showcase. But his other one yeah. was, what was our favorite news of E3 and least favorite moment? Sean, did you have a favorite news moment of E3? I, I have to give it to Forza. I think the the way that they kept showing like what looked like a, a still or a live video feed from somewhere in Mexico, and then the cars just swing in. It looked it looked excellent. And while I'm I, for some reason I'm tempted to try and like think of something else other than Forza, but Forza is it. It was the star of the show. It was the darling of the show. And it's time for it to really take like its prominence in the Xbox conversation because it is that good. It's not just like for people who like particularly like car and racing games it's just a fun game and it really surprised me of how well it showed how what how good the visuals looked on series x and i'm excited for people to to really um to experience that later on this year but yeah that's like for some reason i'm tempted to think of something else but that's my that's my big one that's the biggest deal i can think of very nice as for me honestly my my favorite moment first of all wasn't at xbox it was metroid for sure by far but Honestly, from Xbox perspective, I would say my favorite E3 news moment was actually the Halo multiplayer showcase that they actually did on Monday. It was actually my favorite Xbox thing, showing off the Halo multiplayer, talking about kind of yeah. uh, kind of in detail and kind of learning about what we're going to be doing every Saturday this fall, Sean. Uh, like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm so excited for us to get our hands on the Halo Infinite multiplayer and yeah. getting to see more of that and kind of getting like learning more about that in greater detail was kind of my number one Xbox specific news moment. Um, obviously, yeah. though, Iodin Chronicles was another highlight for me as well from the Xbox pre- conference. But Very nice. Sean, we got to go. But before we go, Sean, plugs go. You can find me on Twitter at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery, Capri like the pants. You can find me on Twitch on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. We're on Saturdays. We're doing Halo Saturdays. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Sean Capri. And if you like hearing me podcast, you can hear me on We The Gamer Cast. It's a weekly show where I have sweet hangs with strangers from the internet. I do the Nintendo Drive with my friend Console Cato. We've got our reactions to Nintendo's uh, E3 presentation this weekend and all the other good stuff, man. You can go to patreon.com slash Yumi Capri and top, drop a dollar in the tip jar. And that is it for me, my friend. Very nice, my friend. As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. You also find us on Twitter at the Xbox Drive, as well as all your podcast services around the globe, as well as youtube.com slash the Xbox Drive. So for Sean Capri, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 194 of the Xbox Drive, only six more episodes before 200, and we out. Bye. I'm really enjoying Yakuza like a dragon even if Ryan said that he didn't really like it it just proves to show that you can actually have two different people like two totally different types of games even if one is really inclined to like RPG games and one isn't and that's me and that's Ryan and that's the show Bye.